Okay, so in the last video, we had a look at what we call anti-differentiation. And we had a look at being able to anti-differentiate functions with this form here, ax to the power of n. And we said that the antiderivative, and that was uh, represented by this tall looking S shape here, the antiderivative of ax to the power of n with respect to the variable x, that's what that dx convention means. Well, we said that that was equal to ax to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, and we had to plus c. And if we remind ourselves why we end up with n plus 1, that was because we came up with these rules. And in blue, that's referring to this n plus 1 here. And we have to add 1 to the power of x. Add 1 to the power of x. That was our first step. So we add 1 to the power of x. And then in the red, we had to divide by the new power. Divide by the new power. So to be able to anti-differentiate a function of this form ax to the power of n, we add 1 to the power of x and then divide by the new power. And I'm going to go through a couple of examples now. Um, and we'll start off by saying, uh, I want to show you a little convention. And a common convention that you'll see in textbooks is that uh, f of x, capital F of x, or, or the capital letter of, of a function, is equal to the antiderivative of the lowercase uh, letter version of that function. So the antiderivative of a lowercase f of x with respect to x. Okay, so we'll look at a couple of examples and hopefully this notation will make a little bit more sense. So let's say, for example, that uh, f of x is equal to 2x to the power of 3, and we are asked to find capital F of x. So what this is asking us to do is anti-differentiate this lowercase function of x, anti-differentiate 2x cubed, because capital F of x is equal to the antiderivative of a lowercase f of x. And that's just a common convention that you'll see a lot of times in textbooks. So if we're asked to find f of x, well, we know that f, capital F of x is equal to the antiderivative of lowercase f of x. And in this case, that's our 2x cubed. So it's the antiderivative of 2x cubed with respect to the variable x. And we know how to do this from the last video. We need to add 1 to the power. So we get 2x to the power of 3 plus 1, or to the power of 4. And then we need to divide by that new power of 4. And we have to make sure we plus c on the end. And when we can simplify this fraction down, we end up with x to the power of 4 over 2 plus c. And that would give us our capital f of x. We've anti-differentiated that lowercase f of x function of 2x cubed. And we'll do a couple more examples. Okay, So keeping in mind that we're asked to find the capital f of x where lowercase f of x is equal to, in this case, lowercase f of x is going to be equal to 4 times the square root of x. And well, here, we need to find capital F of x. And we know that that is equal to the antiderivative of that 4 times the square root of x. And we can rewrite that 4 times the square root of x as 4x to the power of a half. And that gets it into that ax to the power of n form that we need to be able to anti-differentiate our function. Okay, well, what do we do here? We follow the exact same process. We add 1 to the power, so we end up with 4x to the power of 3 halves, and we divide by the new power, and I'm going to write divide by 3 over 2, and then we plus c on the end. And well, if we divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the inverse of that fraction. So we end up with 4x to the power of 3 halves still, but now we're going to make it easier for ourselves, and we're going to multiply by 2 thirds and we plus c on the end. Okay, and if we do that, we end up with 8x to the power of 3 over 2. So multiplying this 4 with this 2 here, and we divide by that 3 on the bottom, plus c. And there's one more little example that I want to do, and that is if our ax to the power of n form has a negative value for n, so a negative power. So in this case, our lowercase f of x is going to be 2x to the power of minus 3. And well, remember that we're asked to find capital F of x, which is simply just the antiderivative uh, of our lowercase. So capital F of x is equal to the antiderivative of 2x to the power of minus 3 with respect to the variable x. And I see I should have put a dx here. Okay, coming down, well, we need to do the exact same process again. Okay, we add 1 to the power, 
And this is where it catches a lot of people out. It doesn't become negative 4 because that's going the other way down the number line. If we add 1 to the power, we move in a positive direction, we get minus 2. So that's a common thing which will catch a lot of people out. And then again, we just divide by the new power there. We get divided by minus 2. And of course, we add our constant c. Okay, so we end up with 2 divided by minus 2 gives us minus 1. Minus x to the power of minus 2 plus c. And it's always nice to express our indices in positive form. So we want to try and get that minus 2 to become a plus 2 somehow. And what we do there is we end up with minus 1 over x squared is the way that we fix that up, plus c. Okay, and there's a few examples for um, reminding ourselves what we did last video. And what I want to do now is I want to do something surrounding this plus c, surrounding this constant. And if we're given a piece of information, there's a way that we can actually find what that constant is. So I want to come down here and we're going to do one last example. And we are told that lowercase f of x, or our baby function, is equal to 4x cubed. Okay, and we're asked to find what capital F of X is if we're given this condition, if capital F of 1 is equal to 2. Okay, so we're given a condition now, and this will help us find a value for C. Well, we know that capital F of X, we're going to follow the exact same process as what we've been doing. Capital F of X is the antiderivative of this lowercase f of X function. So it's the antiderivative of 4X cubed with respect to the variable X. And we can anti-differentiate that. We add 1 to the power of x, becomes 4x to the power of 4, and we divide by our new power, 4. And we add our constant, c. And of course, we can simplify that down. The 4 over 4 cancel out. We get x to the power of 4 plus c. But the trick here to find c is that we're given a condition. We're told that f of 1, so f of 1, is equal to 1 to the power of 4, plus c, so substituting 1 into our new value for capital F of x here. Okay, and this f of 1, we substitute in and we're told that that is also equal to 2. So if we come down here, 1 to the power of 4 is just 1, so we get told that 1 plus c is equal to 2, and therefore c, by taking 1 from both sides, is equal to 1. And by having this condition of capital F of something, we can now say that capital F of x is equal to, just up here, x to the power of 4. And instead of plus c, we can substitute c in to be 1. And we see there that capital F of x is x to the power of 4 plus 1. So we can only find a value for c if we're given a condition like so. Okay, otherwise we just leave it as a, a e plus c, as any constant. And that's pretty much it for the examples surrounding anti-differentiating functions uh, in that nice ax to the power of n form. And that little bit to look out for, always remember that plus c. It's so important, and it's where a lot of people will lose marks. And always remember that if you're adding 1 to the power of a negative number like we did here, this does not become, this does not become minus 4. It becomes minus 2. Okay, we have to move the correct way out that number line. Okay, well that's it for uh, ax to the power of n anti-differentiation and some examples there. And we'll move on to something different in the next video. Thank you.